Sadly, but as is often the case in history, the past 35 years uh, of experience of certainly the first decade of extreme violence, of totalitarianism, of a authoritarian theology, there are many different ways of describing it, but we can probably agree that we've had, uh, uh, we've had violence before the revolution, but the revolution, like most modern revolutions, brought that violence to an entirely different systematic level. So it wasn't just, uh, I don't know, a case of oriental despotism, to quote Karl Marx, but it became a context of uh, systematic revolutionary violence in order to consolidate the power of a new regime. And we've seen it throughout history. So what has that historical experience done? And how has that situated Iranian civil society compared to the rest of the region? And how is the sort of Iranian uprising in 2009, the elements of which, the ingredients of which are still there, even if they've been repressed for now. How does that contrast with the, the so-called uh, Arab Spring? Well, one of the, uh, I think, differences is that because Iran has gone through this sort of social revolutionary period, the new generation, for the most part, is a post-utopian, post-ideological generation. Um, when I was in the United Nations, I was in Cambodia at one time, and I spoke to one of the Cambodian princes who explained to me that he wanted to send his son to study in Paris because, you know, Cambodia used to be a French colony, all the elites send their children there. But he said, I sent him to study in the Soviet Union at Moscow University instead. And I was a bit surprised. I said, why would you do that? He says, well, I want to make sure he doesn't become a communist. So I sent him to the Soviet <laughs> Union where he saw the reality because if he went to Paris, he would certainly become and the one place in the Middle East where people probably have the most serious misgivings about having a sort of a, a political Islam is Iran, because people have seen the reality. And this includes very devout Muslims who simply understand that there's a difference between having faith and allowing that faith to become an instrument of oppression. I was in Tahrir Square in Cairo, and whenever I said to someone, I'm from uh, uh, Iran, they would immediately say, Habibi Ahmadinejad, very good. I said, no, <laughs> because you haven't lived there. And that is exactly why you have this romantic idea about what the reality is. So this, ironically, this very uh, painful historical experience has ripened and matured Iranian civil, civil society, which I think uh, contains many of the ingredients for a successful transformation, which isn't just about regime change, but about a, a fundamental transformation of cultural values which makes uh, democracy, a culture of human rights, uh, sustainable.